Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Rail here, and today I've got another literary analysis video on Vigor's Season 11 cassettes, this time on cassette number 4 titled Tranquility. So just a preemptive warning here, this is undeniably the darkest one of the cassettes we've covered so far, and it will talk extensively about more depressing aspects of war and the confrontation of death. So if you're overly sensitive to those topics, I would recommend clicking off. Now that that's out of the way though, we can start to analyze this. The first few lines of this cassette don't really have anything too deep or insightful. At the start of this, she's more describing the situation and establishes her immediate context for the cassette. Obviously, picking up from the last episode, she's still hurt, trying to recover from her wounds, and she's in an area that's completely unfamiliar to her. So Freya's character at the start of this is scared, cold, and weak. After we get the first few lines establishing the setting, it changes suddenly, as she enters a small cave under the impression that this will be a good place to heal further and get out of the elements. This change in setting is important because it'll also be paralleled by a change in Freya's mindset, so pay attention to that. This description of the surroundings in the cave tell us a lot about both the previous inhabitants and Freya. The items across the ground tell us this was the home of a survivor who was just sort of barely getting by. Those dirty blankets, the use of branches for improvised bedding, and a map that's not even adequate for navigation give us a glimpse as to what it was like for the other civilian survivors trying to make it out in the Outlands. Obviously, the conditions were brutal, and survival in a world as harsh as Vigors is always going to be a struggle fueled by instinct. But the drawing and the attempt to make it as comfortable as possible speaks to the remaining aspects of humanity that is present in all all people left by this war. This segues me into what this scene tells us about Freya. The thing she focuses on the most in the description of this room is the drawings. It's a comfortable reminder of the positive elements of human expression, and that fixation on the positives of this scene instead of the desperation is what make her call it Higlig, a Norwegian word that means cozy and comfortable happiness. And so the last thing she notices and describes about the cave is the darkest aspect of it, the body. She has difficulty confronting the reality that is the complete loss of humanity, and with that she's forced to personally grasp the concept of death there and then and realize the futility of their situation. This to me is another pivotal moment of Freya's loss of innocence, and we'll see the lasting effects of that in the following cassettes. So continuing on with the annotations. She's seen plenty of bodies in her past. After all, death is very commonplace in the apocalypse, but this one is exceptional in the way that it affects Freya. The preservation of her face as as well as the comfortably personalized decorations of the setting give her a glimpse into this person's life, and once again it allows her to see and understand the complexities of death and loss. The last four words are particularly powerful, and give us a lot of insight into the mind of Freya. She looked so peaceful. This is what ties back to the title and really establishes the internal conflict in her. She looks at death as a comforting and peaceful concept, and pushing so hard as a survivor makes her question the worth of continuing to fight in a world as dark as this. But her instinct and the optimistic teachings of her mother contradict those feelings, and continue to drive her forward, since she strives to stay alive for the rest of this story. In this last segment, she takes a closer look at the body, once again telling us about how much she values the principles of humanity and mortality. Because even though she could use this shelter and it offers better protection against the elements than her van does, and the body has some clothes that she could very much use, she chooses to leave it all where it is. She respects the dead and lets this person keep their clean and personal cave as a sort of respectful tomb, to be kept as a reminder of the humanity taken by the rest of the world. So that's all the analysis for cassette number 4. As always, I hope you enjoyed my commentary on the very heavy subjects of this one, and just as before, the complexity and characterization only grows with each new cassette. So stay tuned for the next episode. If you had different interpretations or had something you'd like to add, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, this has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.